Battlefront has two Churchill kits in plastic, one that builds the Mark 1, 2 and 3, and another that builds later versions. I've already reviewed the earlier kit. Now I want to take a look at the late war Churchill kits. Join me for a look. This is the Churchill Armoured Troop BBX 56 box set. This is a late war box for British forces in flames of war. The A22 Churchill was a heavy infantry tank, designed to a specification which assumed it would need to operate in the trench conditions similar to the First World War. Infantry tanks were meant to support infantry, so the emphasis was on protection rather than firepower or mobility. Initially armed with a two-pounder gun in the turret and a three-inch howitzer in the hull, later marks adopted the six-pounder and later 75mm guns. As well as gun tanks, the Churchill hull was used for several engineering vehicles, as well as a formidable flamethrower. If we look at the back of the box, we can see that this kit allows you to field quite a few of these variants in the game. The box can field the Churchill flame tank platoon and the AVRE assault section, as well as the standard infantry support tanks. There are parts for three Churchill tanks, one decal sheet, one assembly diagram and five unit cards. Normally assembly diagrams are printed on the back of the box, but the instructions for all the different variants required a separate sheet. The box art does show the different gun tank and engineering variants you can build using optional parts. Showing the different gun and turret combinations is very helpful. There was a lot of variation in late Churchill marks. Let's look at the plastic. The parts come on two sprues of olive green plastic. Parts are well cast and there's a good level of detail for a 15mm wargaming kit. This is the level of quality we've come to expect from Battlefront Plastics. This first sprue is common with the mid-war Churchill and has the hull and tracks as well as some hatches and stowage. The tracks are one-piece parts. On a Churchill, that's a big deal. I wouldn't want to have to assemble the tank's complex suspension. The road wheels look good. The one-piece nature of the parts means track detail is a bit simplified, but plenty good enough for wargaming. The tracks are keyed so you can't assemble them incorrectly. The upper hull has good surface detail. There's a lot going on here with engine deck and grill detail as well as the strengthening ribs in the track guards, all just begging to be dry brushed. The track guards are moulded integral with the hull so you can't model any of this as missing without grabbing out a razor saw. This section of the sprue has some of the smaller parts. This includes the rear hull plate and glasses plate. The glasses is the stepped version for the Mark IV and V. It was replaced by a straight plate for the Mark VII. There's also the six-pounder gun and both open and closed commander's hatch options. The front fenders are separate pieces, so you can model these on or off. There's some spare track links and the early pattern square crew escape hatches. The second sprue is the late war sprue, and it has the turret pieces, guns, and the parts for the flame tank fuel trailer. The Mark IV and V Churchills used a rounded cast turret. This cast design was developed to take the six pounder gun. It was cast instead of welded because of a shortage of flat armour plate at the time. Near the cast turret is the rear hull plate for the crocodile with the hole to mount the fuel trailer. The gun is the 95mm howitzer for the Churchill 5CS. The other gun is the 75mm gun. This is essentially a six-pounder gun rechambered to fire the same 75mm ammunition as the Sherman. Performance was very similar and this simplified logistics. Below that is the 290mm spigot mortar, the main armament for the AVRE Churchill variant. This fired a massive demolition round called the Flying Dustbin, used to destroy bunkers and obstacles. The nice thing is, with the two turret types you can build two complete turrets. This can give you options. There's also the straight glasses plate with the round machine gun mount for the later Churchills, as well as the later round hull escape hatches. Unfortunately, there was a small sink mark in the middle of each of these hatches on all the examples in my box set. This will need to be filled and sanded. This is the fuel trailer for the flamethrowing Churchill Crocodile. The wheel trailer carried the pressurised fuel for the flame projector, which replaced the hull machine gun. The fuel was ducted through the fighting compartment via a flexible nozzle within the trailer mount. 
a single sprue of hard plastic British tank commander figures is included. This is the standard World War II sprue supplied in most Battlefront British tank box sets. You also get some decals. These are limited to some allied stars and white squadron markings. Triangles for A squadron, squares for B squadron and circles for C squadron. You'll need to find division markings, bridge classification numbers and British T-series serial numbers elsewhere. Battlefront do have a late war British decal set available. So, those are the parts in the late war Churchill armoured troop box set. This is up to Battlefront's usual standards of moulding and engineering. It should build up into a nice kit. The big problem you'll have is deciding which variant to build. I bought these to build some Churchill Crocodile flame tanks to frighten people with, but I also want to make the AVRE. I guess this is why Battlefront included just the basic generic decals. If you included all the decals for the different variants you could build, you'd need a bigger box. This brings me to the problem of which variant stats to cover when discussing how these will go on the tabletop. I bought these to fill the crocodile, so that's what I'm going with. The Churchill Crocodile Flame Tank Platoon is a tank unit with the Flame Trailer's special rule. Flame Trailers can't charge into contact and can't hold an objective. These are support units, they're too valuable and vulnerable to risk holding objectives. This is also reflected in the Crocodile's counter-attack rating. Their motivation is a confident 4+, and protected ammo gives them a 3+, remount but the counter-attack is a 6. They aren't likely to do well in assaults. They will most likely break off. Similarly, their skill is a 4+, but if they're involved in an assault, their assault rating is a 6. They are careful, hit on a 4+. Crocodiles are based on the Churchill 7 chassis, so front armour is 11, side is 8, and top 1. They will need this thick armour to survive as they trundle up into close range to use their flamethrowers. Churchills are infantry tanks and thus are pretty slow. Tactical move is just 8 inches or 20 centimetres. Even the dash speeds aren't much more. Cross is a 3+, plus, however. While it was slow, the Churchill was renowned for its ability to negotiate terrain. Crocodiles retain their 75mm gun, so they can fight as normal gun tanks. The 75mm gun has a 28 inch or 70 centimetre range, with a moving rate of fire 1 and halted of 2. Anti-tank is 10, one less than the 6-pounder gun. Firepower is 3+. plus. The gun can also fire smoke, that's the only special rule for the 75mm. The flamethrower has a very short range of just 6 inches or 15 centimetres. Rate of fire is 6, moving or halted. Anti-tank is 2 with an auto firepower. If you hit and penetrate, it burns. The flamethrower has both the flamethrower and forward firing special rules. Flamethrower means infantry, gun and unarmoured tank teams re-roll successful saves when hit by a flamethrower, and units are automatically pinned down. Armoured tank teams use their top armour value for armour saves. The flame projector is mounted on the front hull between the track horns. This gives it a severely restricted arc of fire. Forward firing means the flamethrower can only hit teams fully in front of the firing team. Crocodiles retain their coaxial machine gun but lose the hull machine gun to the flame projector. This drops their machine gun rate of fire to 3 moving or halted with anti-tank 2 and 6 firepower. Crocodiles are pretty scary if you get them up to bunkers or dug in infantry. They're a support choice for D-Day British lists where you can take up to 2 platoons. However you'd be dropping a lot of points to get 2 platoons. 2 crocodiles are 14 points with 3 coming in at 21 points. Remember, these aren't organic units, so they don't count towards formation morale, and they can't contest or hold objectives. Once everyone's on fire, you'll still need something else to come and sit on the objective. But as I found with my KV-8 flame tanks, flamethrowers hold a fascination for your opponent on the table. These might be a great distraction to hold their attention while you make a move somewhere else. So that's Battlefront's Late War Churchill kit. It's a nice looking kit with a wealth of options you can build. The Churchill was a heavyweight gun tank, but also the basis for many specialty vehicles. It might seem odd that late war Churchills come in boxes of three. Most Battlefront box sets give you four or five, enough for a HQ and one compulsory platoon, but three seems like a good number if you're looking for AVREs or crocodiles. I guess if you want a Churchill armoured squadron you'll need to buy at least two boxes to get started. 
that Churchill's thick hide will give British a chance in the game, which is good because they will take their sweet time trundling slowly across the table. The AVRE is great for digging out troops and demolishing entrenchments while the flamethrowing crocodile will unnerve your opponent. As I said, I bought these to build as crocodiles, but now I'm wondering if standard Churchills might not do well supporting my infantry. Have you used them? How did they go for you? Maybe let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching, see you next time!